say good evening to everybody who is here with us today for our college board meeting. Uh, thank you for attending. First, I want to present Mr. Chair of Personnel and to cover that on my request executive session.
no action is taken in the um, and motion. So move. Okay. Do we need to ask for your comment from our 2012 uh, 2019 amendments? Second. We have one item on the agenda for first minute. Happy to make the recommendation. Allison Dan for administrator effective January 13th. You got it. You got it. Okay. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Let's just pause real quick for a second. Mr. Dan, you can read. <laughs> I can actually go home. <laughs> I will say he's he's been he's been removed from this process. We did this district leadership without Mr. Banner and with the West Ham School Governance Team. So I think the uh, I guess it's a little text in the way. Maybe they're watching us. <laughs> he's been removed from the official. Yes, removed from yes. So, anyways, so congratulations. All right. Next item on the agenda, Mr. Chair, is policy review and updates. And uh, for this section, I'm going to, of course, you know that we're revising our policies and doing new ones and new which is, is, is it's good practice. This is probably, uh, it's best said in a memo to me from Sarah Welch that's doing an attachment. So if you'd like to look at that with me, Ms. Welch says, maintaining accurate and up-to-date policies is vital for the effective performance of the Board of Education. Due to the ever changing nature of legislation and state board rules, policy too must evolve and meet those legal standards. Our last comprehensive policy and board rule occurred in 2007. While policies have been adopted, revised, and more abolished since then, we have not conducted a review of our entire policy manual then until now. Following an extensive review of our current policy manual with our representative from the Georgia School Boards Association and the Carbon Department and Hopkins Law Firm, several existing board policies were identified for possible revision. Existing policies for the provisions are proposed and included, and then you can see the list that Sarah has. And then the proposed, proposed revisions to these are outlined in the subsequent pages of this document. So, Lord, if I could get you to look at that document that you have, and it's an attachment inside of Singley. And you'll notice that it's 66 pages, and you can scroll through the document as Ms. Welch. Talks to us. Now she's not able to be with us this evening, but she has prepared a video. <laughs> and I actually like this video, the notion of the video as an archive to the policy discussion that she's going to present. So as she discusses, and the video is just over 20 minutes long, at any point if somebody wants to pause the video, we can get Mr. Kinsley's attention, we can pause and have a discussion as needed. Uh, or we can wait and have that at the end. But the objective this evening would be to go through this. And then after watching the video uh, and looking at the information and having any discussions that need to, the only recommendation that needs to be made is that we simply table these. Then we'll review further review, further consideration, any constituent contact that you, that you have, uh, we would revisit this then at the February 2020 regular meeting. Okay? So we would just table tonight and, and take no action. So, let me I say we had to probably get you to bring that Yeah, up. we can. And we've got this one on right here as well. Go ahead and get the audio. My name is Sarah. Okay, and then what I'm going to do, Lauren, Hello. This, this will help folks in the audience too. There's a Zoom function on this. And yeah, I'm going to zoom in and then try to focus it you know, so I can get the eye off. Does that look pretty clear? Okay. All right. And so that's the memo that I just read from. Okay. And then Sarah is going to scroll through the same packet that the board is looking at. And this is also posted publicly on Sunday. So you can access it. Okay. Perfect. It's a little small. All right. So, any popcorn, anybody? All right. Go ahead, Mr. 
for their members of the Fanning County Board of Education, faculty and staff, and community stakeholders. My name is Sarah Welch, and I'm the Director of Instructional Services and Policy for Fanning County Schools. I'm here with you tonight to share some proposed revisions to existing board policies. We last conducted a comprehensive policy manual evaluation in 2007. And even though we have adopted new policies, abolished some policies, and revised other policies since that time, we have not conducted a thorough policy examination, which is why we feel the timing is now appropriate. Um, following an extensive review with our representative, Marvin Brooks from GSBA and Carbon, Hartley and Hawkins, we have examined each and every policy and we propose the following revisions. So in the attachment, you will see the first page as an overall memo that lists each policy that we are proposing revisions to. Now these revisions are generally broken into one of few categories. Some are where the state law has changed or the state board rule has changed. <coughs> Some of it is simply a terminology change in those laws. Sometimes you might see where something was listed previously as a specific act or a specific piece of legislation. And in those cases, we try to make it more general to apply to the, again, evolving nature of legislation. Also, there may be some grammatical tweaks here and there that um, all English teachers like to see. So I'm going to take you through um, these policies, which again, all of them have been vetted by our representative of GSBA and Carbon, Hartley, and Hawkins. And as we go through, um, I will try to discuss the nature of those changes. So starting here, and this entire document is posted in assembly, also it will be posted on the website for public access and review. So starting with policy BCBF, Rules of Order, this simply changes um, the terminology. And as we go through these policies, anything you see in red means that it is proposed as a new change. Anything that has a strike through will show an elimination. Um, and then in the event you see where there's red writing and then a highlight, a yellow highlight, you see that where that we have even writing. changed it in additional time. So. Um, these are, again, all presented as proposed revisions that still need to go through the process. So the first policy, BCBF, Rules of Order, um, focuses on the way that board meetings are conducted. And specifically, this was a recommendation from Ms. Brooks about um, the specific wording. Robert's Rules of Order can be very specific in exactly what it says. And there could be a break from policy uh, without anyone's intentions um, because of a wording issue. And so these were, again, the changes proposed by Ms. Brooks for this policy. So simply adding in general and then striking that super specific line. Policy DFK gives some request, strikes the second paragraph, and then comes down to specify that any gifts or donations presented to an individual school or to the whole school system um, that would obligate the district to future operating costs must be approved or denied by the board. This policy change uh, or proposed revision arose as a result of instances in other districts where a school, an individual school, accepted a large gift that did require a peep from the central office from the district, um, and the individual school made that decision. And so this puts any decisions like this that would obligate the district to pay over multiple years um, for those future operating costs to come before the board. Policy DG, Depository of Funds, just ensures that the authorization for all bank accounts for the Board of Education uh, to come directly from the superintendent. And it takes out the part where maybe an individual bookkeeper would have the duty of going in to set up that account. Policy DK, Student Activities Funds Management, um, does strike a lot, and part of the changes on this are as a result of becoming a charter system. Um, in the past, fundraisers all had to be approved by the school board, and now they go before school governance teams. 
So SGTs approve those. Also, stripes are on lines where the level of detail was really too specific to be in a policy. It's really much more procedurally driven. And so that's where we see that and just um, the note that they would be kept separate from other parts. Policy EDDA, special use of school buses, simply is a terminology change. Um, whereas in the past, we used this term, now persons with disabilities is the accepted um, legal term for that. So that has been added in. Policy EEE, wellness program. In this policy, it's one of those instances where the policy references a specific governmental act from 2010. Um, we still have federal requirements, but it's just taking out the name of that specific act for a more all-encompassing overview of those requirements. Policy GAAA, equal opportunity employment. This policy previously addressed both employees and students in one policy. And so policy GAAA actually just breaks this into the employee section. In doing so, really there was one main point um, that needed to be broke out because the Age Discrimination in Employment Act does not apply to students at all. And so whereas that is required to be in the employee version, not the student, and so everything that you see in red is the revision and you can see everything that's been struck through below. The same thing applies for policy GAEV harassment. Our previous policy addressed both employees and students in one policy, and now it has been split into two, and so again, you can see that in what's been struck through. It simply has the employee version. Infectious diseases is a policy, G-A-N-A, uh, where the state board rule actually changed the language. And so this policy has been revised to reflect that state board rule, 160-1-3-0.03. And so it is directly tied to that. <clears throat> policy GARH, employee leaves and absences, is mostly just changing This is actually a link in Google. Mm -hmm. and I have a link in so it kicked them off and threw the ass in there. Yeah, I'm sorry about that three times. I think it's fine. You want me to take a part of the back Let's go ahead and start with the comments, man. You got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. You got I'm not either because we've had files that it's larger, like with pictures and things in that. So. Again, the language. So striking out what did not need to be there and allowing in that flexibility. Um, 
as far as also adding in the concept of um, that this policy can be available for those who are uh, affected by absences due to a death in that person's family. Um, also, there is a section of military leave that um, she revised based on, again, the law and uh, other districts. And so she changed out this for the accepted practice there. Policy GBC, Professional Personnel Recruitment, uh, it simply details what is already in effect, and that means that the superintendent may recommend the transfer or reassignment of personnel into positions, and positions that are filled that way shall not be considered vacant, and therefore they're not subject to uh, the other terms within the policy. Policy GBRC, Professional Personnel Workloads, um, simply strikes the eight hours per day line, and that is um, for those instances where perhaps we have an employee who has a seven hour day or something of that nature. Policy G Brig, G B R I G, Federal Family and Medical Leave Act. The changes here are simply specifying as defined or recognized under FMLA, and as such, um, updating what we have listed to match that as seen in those regulations. And she's also added in the term required here. So this is simply keeping everything um, as it should be to remain compliant. Policy IDBA, um, sex education, simply changes the terminology here where the board itself develops and implements the comprehensive program but the superintendent or designee develops the procedures for that program to exist. And so these were what um, Ms. Brooks added. She also, the policy as written, talked about including a male and female currently in 11th or 12th grades. And so while the intent would still be uh, to have students at those levels uh, there, it just takes off the fact that maybe one year you could not find a male for that committee and so it generalizes it. Policy IDDD, gifted student <coughs> programs, makes two changes. And the first is just the change in language from pupils to students, and then taking out brochures, which we do not have because everything is typically available through the school website. Policy IDE3, competitive interscholastic activities, and it simply updates with a specification that in grades six through eight, the retention of students for athletic or competitive purposes is prohibited. That only references grades six through eight. Grades nine through 12 is still at the top. Policy IDFA, gender equity and sports, is another language change. In Fannin County, we have a Title IX coordinator, not a sports equity coordinator. And so it's simply directing all of those inquiries and complaints to the Title IX coordinator. Policy IDFC, Community Coaches, simply specifies that um, eligible students in our extracurriculars, such as our competitive teams, are enrolled in Fannin County Schools. And then in the moment of silence, um, the way the policy was written before, if someone did not say the exact phrase, then they could have been out of uh, compliance with policy or they could have been breaking policy. So if you said, will everyone, or please, will everyone rise for the moment of silence, that would have broken it. So we've taken out, again, those specific uh, wording issues. And then instead of the moment of silence will, we have changed to is encouraged. So the moment of silence will be encouraged. Policy I. Request and that is going to be on 
I B F C. And so I I B F C I B F C. And you will. Uh, in fact, let's just go ahead and say that it just there. That, uh, I, that's fine. Yeah, okay. IDFC will include notion of moment of silence and the national anthem. Thank you. So, okay. The moment of silence will, we have changed to, is encouraged. So the moment of silence will be encouraged. Policy IFBC media programs simply adds in the element of having a designee here, and then that was a redundant line that was struck. <clears throat> Policy IFBG internet acceptable use. Um, in this case, our policy was basically what we would see in the student handbook, and so it was very lengthy and it has all of the little pieces that would be considered a procedure. So as an example, um, just even saying contact, you know, the director of technology, here is the phone number, all of that was very specific. So all of that will continue to be addressed through um, student handbooks, through our technology department, but the policy itself just provides the framework for them to continue to function. And so the Fanning County School District will enforce its acceptable use in the internet safety guideline. Per I will say that as a former technology director, it's not going to be a better way to address this policy because of the way the nature of technology changes, especially these days. It's better to keep up with this as a team. Law, the only piece of this policy that needed to remain was instructions regarding internet safety and education. We needed to outline our policy for that. However, within that section, there was another area that was highly specific. So as it was written, it was dictated that um, that part would be consist of instruction in the computer lab setting. Well, now with Chromebooks, that is no longer even really an issue. So some of it is just updating the policies to reflect current practice. Policy IHF, graduation requirements. Uh, this policy, we actually had three different policies in effect governing our graduation requirements based on the year a student entered their ninth grade. So to simplify matters and have a graduation policy that was applicable to all of our students, at any given time, this is a generalized version, and um, we requested that GSBA, Herman Hartley and Hawkins, help us by coming up with a generalized policy that would address all of our graduation requirements. Following this, they actually sent it out to the rest of the state, uh, not with Fannie County in it, but as a framework for streamlining other graduation policies. So all of this has the strikes through. Policy JAA, Equal Educational Opportunities, is an instance where earlier in GAA I said that we split the employee and the student basis, and so policy JAA simply shows the student-specific version. And then this is the uh, proposed older policy again in strike through. Policy JBC, School Admissions, this is one um, where when we look at it, we revised some things and really it's typically wording issues. Um, the only thing in here is that we did revise it to where some of it is against language as far as updating the language from each section. So you are free to go through and read that. Um, special education students through the age of 21 or until they receive a regular high school diploma. It's been changed to special education students with IEPs may attend through the end of the semester that they turn 22 unless they receive a regular high school diploma prior to that time. So uh, making that again more specific and making it match our other policy for special education. And that's really the biggest change to that policy. Was very lengthy. 
policy JDC1, homeless students, um, before listed out specific programs that those students could be eligible for, and by removing the specific list, it does not um, put constraints on what services or those students could be eligible for. So it actually broadens the flexibility of the policy. Um, also, it says, um, again, a specific publication, and the specific publication is simply the Title I handbook, and so it, it's updated that language as well. Policy JBC4, awarding units and transferring credits. Um, the changes are that the board will award credits uh, for units of study completed in middle school courses that are based on the state adopted curriculum for grades 9 through 12. So parents can choose to accept those credits as we currently practice it. The rest of the updates you see are either due to, again, changes in language. Originally, we had the EOCT and that level four. So the highest a student could get on it was recognized as exceeds. Well, now over time, the state has changed its language. So what was exceeds is now distinguished. It's the same concept, the same thing. None of that has changed. It's just a wording. Um, and then this, again, was more procedurally driven. It was not something necessarily that Ms. Brooks felt should be in the policy itself. Um, and then we also felt that we should strike this line that no more than seven units can be awarded for study at a non-accredited public or private school, including a homeschool in any single academic year, because at our high school, we actually have um, eight credits that can be earned in a year, and so it was trying to reflect that practice. And then this simply changes, uh, again, the language to from attended to been enrolled. Policy JDCA, resident students, um, changes, again, the wording a little bit to fall in line with district transfer procedure. And so student assignment, this says that Fanning County uh, the Board of Education is authorized by state law to designate school attendance zones um, within the district. So it establishes that and then says that um, children residing in the attendance zone are required to attend the appropriate school in which uh, in the attendance zone in which they live with their parents or guardians. And so uh, those are the big tweaks to this one. Non-resident students. And this here, instead of saying uh, B Georgia, policy JBCB non-resident students, that all students attending Fannin County schools must be legal residents of Fannin County, except as otherwise provided by board policy. Um, children of Fannin County district employees who work in the schools shall be allowed to attend Fannin schools. Policy JCABB, this was previously entered or adopted as a policy in JCBAC. Um, this was the part that was mandatory to have, but Ms. Brooks simply said, in this case, we need to revise the coding and not necessarily the policy itself. So the policy is the same. It is simply moved from the other code and the only other change is an issue with pronoun antecedent agreement, um, which is totally grammatical in nature. <laughs> Policy JCAC harassment. This is again from before where student and employee policies have been split. And so this one simply addresses the nature and needs of students. And so you can see the old version again, struck through below. Policy. JCDA, the Student Code of Conduct. Um, again, this simply takes out portions that are no longer required by law um, and no longer practiced. So in this instance, students shall be prohibited from using electronic devices during the operation of a school bus. Well, at this point, we have Wi-Fi on our school buses and our students 6 through 12 have Chromebooks. And so we're actually encouraging them to use those electronics on a school bus. So in instances like that, it needed um, to be changed again just to update it. And then there was another um, strike through here because those 
are included in the Code of Conduct. Policy JGCC Infectious Diseases. This is that same um, policy again that was applied to our employees in Section G, but this is the State Board rule that changed the wording. So that is simply the new version based on that. And the final policy that we are putting forward um, for revision is policy JGF, student safety. And again, this was an instance where certain acts were listed out and named. And instead of listing those specifics, we simply put the all-encompassing state and federal safety standards. So those are things you would still um, obviously have as those overall requirements. And then at the end, it lists the Georgia Department of Human Resources, and then again lists those specific rules. And so the wording has just um, been changed to state of the designated state agency. So to allow for those changes and for the appropriate agency to contact it. So all of these policies that we are putting forward have not been changed at this time. These are the proposed revisions based on a study of our practices as well as any changes to state board rules or actual legislation. And so um, we put these forward for you tonight to uh, review and table. I appreciate your time. I appreciate any times where the mouse might have been jumpy and I scroll too fast. Again, this document will be made available on the school system website and it is in assembly for your review. If you have questions, please let me know. Thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Sarah's unable to be with us this evening due to a medical issue, a uh, medical appointment. I think this was actually a really good way to present a great deal of information. So my apologies for the glitch with um, whatever's going on with that, but we'll have technology check into that and see if it's, a, if it's an e-board issue or maybe it's not had up to the issue or something. I think, I think it was good that we went back and revised all those. Mm -hmm. So 67207 is now out of a pretty good bit. Uh, she also done a great job of putting all that together. Mm -hmm. you know, she is a organizer. Mm -hmm. We had some people that were very quick to jump in and take care of it, help us fix the issues. And, and, and as Sarah said, It'll be on the website tonight. Mm -hmm. It's going to be school board. It will be. It's not there yet. Okay. They wanted, you know, she wanted so you the guys to see it yes. first, yes. Out of respect. But that'll be the access to the video and then also the document mm -hmm. she was scrolling through. Uh, it's also on symbol. Mm -hmm. Public view of symbol. Mm -hmm. Forward to the department. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have anything? Because I think this is time. Though. I think she should have stopped when she got to that grammatical issue and asked us all to explain that back to her. <laughs> I was an English been. teacher sitting beside me. <laughs> With that, it wasn't me. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, I, I would simply like to have good business with her. It's a bit of an undertaking, but um, her, her level of enthusiasm is. It's great. I did not share that same level when I reviewed it. <laughs> 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 well, I was, and, and this is a this is a big problem, and so it's being taken in small bites. So really, the first step is just what we're looking at here is policy that just needs revision. So the next step then is to also land with a policy that needs to be added, or policy that needs to be considered to be abolished. And so we will pursue that now, but we will do it in the same procedure that we introduce or revise or, or abolish policy where it is put before the public, <coughs> it is described or, or somehow explained to the public. I actually like this one because we can go back and, and, and review it and then and the table and then revisit it next one. So, yes, sir. Uh, 
start visiting extracurricular type things that our kids are doing, but we also want to witness the dismissal procedures because, I mean, a lot of things that come out, uh, we have a lot of, you know, one of the folks is communication and school system message. There's a lot of communication that takes place at parent pickup and bus time. Mm -hmm. If you've never been there or seen that in, in action, it is, I want you, I guess, I want y'all to see how well our people get so many cars loaded everything going on and our buses is safely gone uh, in the afternoons uh, as they leave the school. Plus we're kind of probably blocked in there because it's not there we go. So it's going to be a, a, a great time. I talked to Dr. Hodges about that uh, and uh, she's uh, uh, more, than, more than glad for us to be out and see that. Then we're going to uh, travel over to the courthouse. Uh, we have a mock trial team that's going to be practicing for their competition. Uh, where they're going to be actually in the courtroom presenting the case. Uh, well, we'll, 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 well, right there, we have two of our mock trial coaches here with us, we'll our, our two attorneys. Do you have anything you want to add to that? Just that we were we were practicing, and um, I told them that y'all were possibly going to be coming to watch. And um, of course, I've been there with them. Miss Goss has been there. Uh, Miss Sosby, our district attorney, is also helping this year. So there are several of us. And um, when I'm there and, and we're practicing, they, it doesn't seem to bother them if they don't have it quite together or not. But the idea of Ms. Doss and Ms. Sosby and the board seeing them before they were completely ready made them very nervous. So I assured them that y'all would realize the competition is not this week. We've still got a few weeks left, but they are uh, they're looking forward to, uh, to your coming. Uh, once I told them they did not have to be concerned if they weren't. Perfect yet, they'll they'll get there and be fine. <laughs> we have learned over the years and, and thanks to Miss Watney, we're they're doing a dress rehearsal about three weeks earlier than normal because we've done dress rehearsals. We've always had dress rehearsals, 
But when you do dress rehearsals and you're going to competition two days later, it doesn't give you much time to correct. And so uh, we came up with the idea that we would have a first dress rehearsal where we go through it and then we know all the warts and have opportunity to correct our warts. Well, the ladies put on their power suits and the young men put on their ties and their, their jackets too. I think it just takes it up. And, it's, it's again one of those things that our kids are doing, you know, after school and you know, a lot of sports are going on and different things as well. So we've kind of reached out to different countries. We also have esports going on at that time. So if we have time, we'll try to do it for up in high school. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Mathis is the coach for that. Uh, we'll try to do up there if we possibly can. I just wanted to thank you both for for lending your your knowledge and expertise and helping with that program. A number of our former Mock trial team members are now practicing attorneys. They are, and thank God they don't practice in the circuit. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Mr. Mathis. Thank you. Mr. Mathis. I really enjoy it. <laughs> I'm just going to say, with us <laughs> visiting them, that should help get them over the being in front of people and stuff like that. So it should just help them instead of Absolutely. being a hindrance. Absolutely. So we're going to try to visit a couple of different extracurricular activities and we'll come back here at five. We've got dinner. Uh, uh, have ready for you where we can have some time there. And then uh, 545 to 6, we'll transition to the actual regular movement at, at 6 o'clock. And I'm excited. Uh, it's going to be a great day. I appreciate you guys what you do. Uh, this will actually complete our 12 hours of training that we've been able to do over our two retreats. Uh, in February, I will come to you and ask if you want to, because we have to officially vote at the board meeting, uh, whether or not to be an exemplary board. Uh, and we will, uh, after we do the self-assessment uh, that each of you will do, and also the external review, we'll then uh, go there and we'll be actually there. We're much further ahead this year with us being able to do the, the uh, training this way to be able to present and also submit our stuff earlier. So, I'm excited. It's going to be a great day. Oh, it's going to be a great day. And, uh, and Amelia, you guys are always welcome yeah. to join us. You can uh, go to west with us, or you can meet us there. Or, mm -hmm. You got the schedule. You can intersect. Uh, whatever you whatever you choose to do, you're always welcome. Mm -hmm. So, looking, uh, Mr. Ransley, if we'll take us to the ninth, uh, the second part of this third agenda, let's just take a quick look then. At six o'clock, um, we will call the board and I'll let you catch up with us. Ooh, that's a long one. Hold on. <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's the last one. Uh, Is it live yet? Look under up I'm not logged in. He can do something. No pressure to remember the password. <laughs> <laughs> This won't go live until tomorrow in case we need to make revisions. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So call the order at 6 p.m. Uh, invitation to pledge. Looking for grants and scouts for this? Yes. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll take care of that for us. Uh, and then we go into the Board of Reorganization where we appoint the chair and the vice chair for 2020. We'll set the date, place, time of the board meeting for 2020. Of course, items for the consent agenda. The meeting minutes from December are already in there. It's possible to have meeting minutes uh, as well from the consent agenda from this meeting uh, in there. Uh, school governance team update, Betsy? We'll be very short because we didn't have uh, that we a couple of weeks that we need in December. So that'll be good. Uh, school happening, Mr. Knuckles. Public comment facilities update as well as the safety update, Mr. Bain. Got some information to share with us. Uh, financial report and SPLOS update is when. Uh, of course, the, the second part of central office update, or the new central office data, is the second update on foreign policies. So we'll continue to point out with Sarah. Uh, and then the system, we have some equipment that needs to be looked at for salvage. And Mr. Ransley has a couple of updates for us for self assessment. I think uh, it's launched. It has been launched on Monday. You should have received an email. If you have any questions about that or any technical support, let us know. You know, a couple of you are already, already completed it, you know, so that's, that's good. And, uh, and if you need help that, let us know. Well, before training, as you said a moment ago, we should be celebrating. Yeah, yeah we'll be we'll 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 And then, uh, well, Brian Busterton will be with us on uh, on Thursday. Yeah, I remember Brian from last year. Talk to him today. And then, 
I expect we'll have at least some personnel and a little bit of personnel that evening. And then comments and we'll done. So with that, Mr. Chair, I'd like to have a raise on our agenda for the problem in this evening. So unless there's further discussion or comments, I'll turn back over to you, Paul. Second. Thank you, boys. Thank you as well. Yeah. <laughs>